Hello everyone, John T here and let me start off by saying thanks very much for watching. Now this is the third and slightly belated video in my series of short videos about the fascinating subject of leisure batteries. Now in the first video we looked at the types of batteries that are commonly available for motorhomes and in the second video we looked at what you should be, should be considering when choosing a battery for your own motorhoming needs and the links to both those videos should be somewhere over my left shoulder. Now in this video we're going to be looking at what you need to do, be doing if you want more power than is available in a single battery. And as always I'm trying to get as many subscribers as possible. I've got a challenge to get over a thousand subscribers. So if you could subscribe by clicking on the link which should be in I think the bottom left hand corner of the video that would be much appreciated. <laughs> As I said a few moments ago, I'm a bit later posting this video than ideally I would have liked because we've been up to see our lovely grandgirls up near Cambridge. Now that is quite a long way from us here in North Devon and certainly further than poor Ermitrude here can manage gracefully in one go. So we have been doing quite a bit of wild camping on the way there and on the way back and here's a little video to give you a clue as to where we've been. Now that means of course that we've had limited access to hookups and have been relying on our leisure batteries quite a bit. As we saw in my last video, the size of battery you need depends on the battery's capacity. In other words, how long it will power your 12 volt accessories for. And if you're wild camping, it's likely that you will need power to your 12 volt accessories for quite some time. So what happens if you've calculated that you need more battery capacity, more capacity, more power than you can get in one battery? Well, here's the thing, you get two batteries. Well, of course, but how do you wire them up? Now, I'd like to show you using Ermintrude's leisure battery setup, but I'm afraid it's a case of do as I say rather than do as I do, because if I'm being perfectly honest, Ermintrude's setup is a bit of a dog's breakfast and doesn't conform to all the advice I'm about to give you. Yeah, I know, I'm doing my best and I'm working on it, okay? So what I have done is put a few simple animations together which I hope will do a far better job of illustrating what you need to do. Right, so here's your leisure battery, relatively new and very high quality as you can see, but you've watched my previous video and worked out that it's not going to be enough for your needs. So what do you do? Well, you could throw it out and get a new one of large enough capacity if you can find one, or you could get a second battery and wire them together to form a battery bank. Be warned though, there are two main ways to wire the batteries together, in series and in parallel. Now you must make sure that you wire the batteries up in parallel because if you wire them up in series they'll pump out 24 volts and fry your 12 volt accessories and there is a potential if small fire risk. Luckily it's not complicated so have a look at this. So firstly how not to wire them up. These two batteries are very cleverly wiring themselves up so that the current passes through first one and then the other. In other words in series. Wiring them up in this way means the voltage they provide doubles but their capacity and amp hours stays the same. Now this is definitely not what you want, unless of course you have for some bonkers reason decided to swap all your 12 volt gadgets for 24 volt ones. Now let's look at the right way to wire them up. Well almost the right way, but we'll get onto that in a second. Here's the same two batteries, now even more cleverly wind themselves up in a way that could look like two rivers converging if you look closely. In other words, they're wiring themselves up in parallel. Now what we have is the same voltage, but the current has doubled. You've got 12 volts and 140 amps, which should be perfect, except it's not quite. The trouble with wires and cables is they suck up some of the voltage. The longer the cable, the more voltage they absorb. This is called voltage drop and is usually so small that we can ignore it, but nevertheless it's there, and in this case there's going to be a small voltage drop between the battery on the right and the one on the left. So let's say about half a volt per cable, or a total of one volt. That means the left-hand battery will always supply more power than the right-hand one, because the right-hand one is not pulling its weight volt-wise. Now that's very annoying for the left hand battery because it means you're working harder than the right hand one and you're going to need replacing sooner. And very annoying for you because as we'll see in a moment you'll have to replace both batteries even though one is still okay. Now the fleet of mind amongst you will be wandering the other side of the battery equation which is charging. Yes we've got the same problem here but in reverse. When the batteries are on charge left hand will get the full 14 volts while right hand will only get 13 volts. So we have the unsatisfactory situation where left hand is doing more work than right hand 
and right hand isn't getting charged properly. Luckily the solution is free and very simple, you've just got to wire them up slightly differently. By moving the output or live cable to Mr Lazy, we've evened up this voltage drop to both batteries. Now both work as hard as each other and both get an equal charge. What this also means of course is that you need to make sure that the connecting cables are as near as damn at the same length or you're going to get a voltage drop in the two connecting cables. Right, well we're nearly there but there are a couple more things you need to bear in mind before buying a second battery and connecting it to your existing battery. Firstly, both batteries must be the same capacity, otherwise the larger capacity battery will try and charge the smaller battery. And the reason for this, the reason this happens makes sense if you think of power as water. And if you visualise two tanks, one of which is half full, the other is full, connected by a pipe at the bottom, water is going to flow from the full tank until the water pressure in both tanks is equalised. Secondly, both batteries should be the same make. Now, although batteries from two different manufacturers are normally the same capacity, their characteristics will very likely be different, which could lead to problems. Thirdly, don't mix different types of battery. In other words, lead acid with gel or lead acid with absorbed glass mat, for example, as again, their characteristics are very different and will lead to expensive problems. And lastly, if you possibly can, try and make sure that the two batteries have the same manufacturing date as batteries do deteriorate over time, even if they're not being used. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. My next video is going to be about looking after your leisure batteries with a little bit of safety thrown in. I'm going to try and get that up uh, posted within the next week or two. In the meantime, please subscribe by clicking on the icon below. And if you want to be notified when I stick a video up, on YouTube, please click on the bell icon. Bye for now.